Hello, and welcome back to part three of our evaluation of Godox flashes. Today we're going to talk about the big brother to the other two flashes that I've reviewed. I've reviewed so far the Godox 860 Mark II, the Godox uh, V1, and today we're going to talk about the 8200. Once again, Godox and Flashpoint are virtually interchangeable. I have both actually in the AD200s. I have one from Godox and one from Adorama. They're exactly the same. Uh, I would uh, recommend that if you're going to use these, you uh, kind of get a feel for what you want to do with flashes. Very often a speed light will do what you want it to do. They aren't very powerful uh, in a lot of ways. They have about a 76 watt second output of light. And that translates a little bit differently with each one. Uh, for instance, the guide number available for the 860 tells you it'll go about 100 feet. There is no guide number for the, 80, for the V1. Uh, so as a result, you just sort of have to depend on how much watt seconds of power they put out. In the smaller flashes, it's 7600. Well, Godox Real has put out another flash. This is sort of bridging just but that area just between the studio flash and the speed light. Uh, again, they're made by Godox and sold in this country by Adorama under their own brand name of Evolve 200. So the Evolve 200 and the AD 200, exactly the same piece of equipment. The AD 200 comes in this nice little kit. It's a little bit heavier than a regular flash. I'm going to look at a little bit more of it. Nice hard case. And... And once again, it is a considerably larger piece of equipment than the speed lights. This is what it looks like. And it has uh, what is almost becoming a hallmark, or a trademark, I should say, with Godox, this giant hole in the side of the flash where you put the battery. And one thing I Now one thing I want to stress that maybe I didn't cover as well as I should have in the other two, batteries for these flashes are all proprietary. They do not interchange between flashes. In other words, the 8200 requires an 8200 battery. That's this little dilly right here, and it's not very little. This battery goes right in the side, just like they all do in the side here. And locks in, easy to get in, open it up here, easy to get out. This battery takes about three hours to charge. Uh, it is not the same battery that fits in the two speed lights. The V1 has its own battery, the 860 has its own battery, and this has its own battery. So don't think you can buy a couple of batteries and go between them if you should choose to use all three speed lights. You can see the flash is a little bit different. First of all, it's shaped, it's a square shape. It has that Fresnel head, standard shaped Fresnel head that you see on uh, speed lights as well. But the difference is, this is a 200 watt second light, AD200. That is about double the power of a speed light. And having that much extra power is an advantage. It is certainly not enough to overpower the sun if you're shooting outside. Godox makes two other flashes in this range, also called uh, the Evolve or the, uh, uh, the AD series. They make a 400 and a 640, considerably bigger, almost no other practical use but the studio. This is called a pocket flash, although as I think you can see, you're going to need some pretty big pockets if you carry this thing around in it. Uh, it is heavier than a normal speed light, and you'll notice there is absolutely no way to attach a hot shoe to this light. This is, not, this is made largely for off-camera flash. You're not going to be able to hook it to your camera. And even if you could, the weight, the size, the cumbersomeness of it, it would be almost impossible to shoot with this thing if it was attached to a camera. It's made to be put on a light stand or in a stand of some kind, an altar, <coughs> excuse me, of some kind, and works from that standpoint. As a result, because there's no hot shoe, there is no connection between the light and the camera unless you use one of two connections. 
that are provided. Uh, the, the one that I don't recommend and the one that frankly is an obsolete as far as I'm concerned way of uh, triggering a flash would be to attach something called a PC cord into this little door right here. This door has, a th has two things in it. <clears throat> you see a 3.5 jack which will accommodate a, uh, a radio plug and it has a USB connector. This USB connector has only one use as far as I know and that is to update the firmware if and when you need to do it. When they put out new firmware for the light you have to put it on, you have to hook this to your computer and you can update it from your computer. The other thing, the 3.5 millimeter plug, is used with this piece. I'm not going to undo it because this is like 18 feet long. Is used by this piece of our cake equipment. This is a PC cord. It fits into the side here. It doesn't come with the flash, by the way. This is an extra one. And this thing hooks into your camera. Now you've got a 15 foot wire hanging out of your camera. It only will control this one flash, doesn't do through the lens adjustment. It's basically just a manual trigger for the flash. When you push the button on the camera, sends a pulse to this and it goes out, meaning all your settings have to be done manually on the back. This is, as I say, archaic. Uh, you can tell I've had this for maybe 15 years. I've never even unwound it. I don't like them. And I have, in the old days when we had nothing but these, I thought they existed primarily, so if you tripped over them, you'd pull down all your equipment, you'd have to buy a new. Seemed like a good plan on their part. Now, again, that's how you connect it. This is really made to be used with a wireless controller. Godox makes two that I use, wireless controllers. This is the XP Pro. It fits on the top of your camera. You can see the little hot shoe arrangement here. It fits on the top of your camera and it communicates. It has a 2.4 uh, megahertz radio in it. It communicates with this flash. According to the manufacturer, it will communicate as far away as 400 feet. I've never had to shoot anything where I had my flash, my camera 400 feet away from the flashes. I'm usually at a lot closer. Also, anytime you're using a radio signal, you have to be aware that things between it can sometimes interfere with it. In most studio settings or in small settings on location, you're never going to have that problem, but you do need to be aware of it. Anyway, this is one, the XP Pro, and this one is the two, this is the RT, R2T, in Godox brand name, the X2T. This is a flashpoint unit. Now, this has uh, an, an auxiliary hot shoe on top. You can actually attach a flash there and use it and then also have the radio commander talk to other flashes. I consider this kind of a redundant thing. I haven't used it a whole lot. I've tried it out one time. I don't see a lot of use for it for the type of work that I do, but I understand that when Godox were going to produce this second one, this is a second version of a previously successful one, they were going to drop this and not have that on top of it. And they got a lot of feedback from their customers saying, no, we want that. We have a use for it. So a lot of people, it's just adopting the equipment you have. Both are very convenient. This is how you talk to most of these flashes. I talk to all of my flashes this way. My flash system is basically set up to use off camera. This one, you, I'm not going to get into how these things work. That might be a, a real good subject for future use of learning how to use a controller with your flashes and how to get different, uh, different effects that way. Needless to say, this basically in TTL, if, uh, ETTL or TTL is going to talk to the flash. It's going to take the data from the exposure meter in your camera. It's going to communicate that with the flash to set the optimal exposure. That's what wireless does and it does it very, very well. I have both of these. I don't find any difference in dependability. It's just which one you like best. Uh, I, this one is, uh, is handy. I, it's kind of a little flatter. The other one sort of hangs up at an angle. This one's nice and flat, and I use it a lot. I use them both. I don't notice any difference between them. The controls in this one are a little bit simpler, which I kind of like. Anyway, back to the flash. Now, this flash, as you notice, has the standard square frontal head, which means that the tubes are running back and forth. You're going to get a square pattern of light, but you're going to get a little bit more of it than you would any other way. One of the beauties of this flash is it brings with it 
several options. You can either use this head on it, or you can use a bare bulb head. Bare bulbs, I'm going to change it. And because Larry's corner doesn't have a lot of tables, so you just have to bear with me as I change things, then put them up and show them to you. This is a bare bulb head. Comes with it. Comes with the kit. You get it for the price of the flash. The flash, by the way, runs $350. Clicks on it like that. The bulb comes in a with a little in a glass container. And you heard me talk before when I talked about the V1, the spiral bulb configuration. Well, that's why. That's what, and also why it takes more power. That flash is a spiral. It comes up, goes around, so you get a really nice concentrated round flash with this. One thing I will tell you, never touch the flash tube any way, shape, or form. Oil, any foreign matter on that flash tube will cause it to burn out. That's why it has this nice thick glass tube on top of it, and it will fit right into the flash for on four little prongs. You just push it down, and now all of a sudden, you've got a bare bulb flash. Bare bulb meaning it's totally exposed. There's no way to shape, there isn't, in this configuration, it does not shape the light at all. It simply comes off and it goes in all directions, which is great if you're using an umbrella, if you're using a soft box, such as, such as a Bowens soft box uh, or a Bowens Octabox, any of those, that nice light coming out of there, the box, the baffles in the box are gonna take it, shape it, put it where you want it. Also, it can be used just uh, bare bulb. I don't do a lot of photography that way. I almost always have some kind of modifier on top of this. And to that end, <clears throat> they make several modifiers for this. It does not come with the flash. You have seen everything that comes with the flash except for the foot, which I'm going to show you in a minute. Uh, this device, the bare bulb, uh, can be used with modifiers. Now, I've only, they make a bunch of them. You can get a reflector, a standard 4.7 4 inch reflector, fits over it that helps cone the light down. Inside of a soft inside of a soft box, that can be usable. Inside of an octa box, it helps, it makes the light a little smaller. And with that uh, hood on it, you can also get a grid that puts in the front of it that narrows it 20 degrees, and you have a, and you have a little bit more light coming out of it that way. One of the things that I do use, and I absolutely love this thing, is this Big Brother reflector to the one I showed you with the V1. This is an additional accessory. It costs, as I recall, about $12, $13. You'll have to check the prices. They go up and down all the time, depending on import, but it's under $20, I'll put it that way. It simply goes into this. It goes into this, right on the top, right over the bare bulb, and locks down with a standard turn lock. That, no, and this thing on the side, that just tightens it up so it doesn't fall off or come out. That gives me, I have these things mounted above me usually like this. So I have this really nice diffuse. This is just a beautiful light that comes out of this reflector. It's bigger than the smaller dome reflectors that, uh, that I talked about before. And it gives me a very pleasing, easy light. Uh, so I'm gonna take that off. That's my preferred one. Now that's the only one of these that I have. You can also buy a set of gels with these that'll fit the four point, uh, they have a, a mini dish they call. If you're using it with a, a, a soft box, sometimes you'll use a very small dish on there just to keep light from going back into the box and essentially being wasted. With this, you just pull out the light when you want to pull it out, put it back in, take the bare bulb head off, And now we're back into the land of other things that we can do with it. This is what comes with the kit. The accessory that I just showed you, the diffuser does not come with the kit, uh, an additional bit of money. The next thing that I'm gonna talk about is the round-headed Fresnel 
that looks just like the one on the V1. This has a lot of possibilities. This is an additional $79 if you want to buy it from them. And you'll notice that it doesn't really have, I'm sorry, I call it a frontal head, it doesn't. It has just a nice milky diffuser in front of it. It does not have a concentrating frontal head. So when you put this on, you now have a round-headed flash. This has the same magnetic ring as the V1. You can attach all the accessories that were shown in the previous video will attach to this. Magnets in there, nice easy flash. Uh, it's, it, it, if you want the smaller dome diffuser, you can use that as opposed to the larger one. Uh, it's, uh, it's every bit as usable as the, as the V1. It's just got a, a twice the power of the V1. So it's a good system. Uh, I bought a couple extra of these to use. And it comes off. You can see it mounts and unmounts real easy. So it's just depending on what kind of light you want and how you want to run it. Uh, <clears throat> this also has with it a uh, an optical slave built into the side of it's hard to see it's right on top here so if you do choose to use this and you have one wired to your uh, using a PC cord to your camera or just one uh, somehow triggered when it goes off th this will pick it up and if you have it set to slave all the other flashes will go just a, a, a photosensitive slave now <clears throat> that being said with this machine it is not made to be used on a, ca on a camera. It's made to be used off camera. And as a result, you have to be able to, to mount it in some way. And that way is with a foot that comes with it. It's really a tremendously usable little thing. If you, you take this foot and you can attach it to this two lugs to mount it in. This one and this one. So with a round head on it, or the kind of diffusers that I use, it really doesn't matter. Uh, but it does matter a lot, and it's very handy if you're using the, fr the uh, Fresnel head. You just have to turn that little thing a lot. It, it mounts on there very securely. And I will say, I'll show you on the one that I haven't mounted on on the side. Notice that there are two little indentations there and there. That also has two little raised feet on there that hook into it. Now you've got it so it will fit onto any standard flash pole that you're going to use. Uh, any way you're going to, you're going to hook it up, it'll, it'll work. Take this off and put the regular head back on so you can see the difference. It's a little more obvious of why you'd want that on the side. That, now you have the Fresnel head in the front there, which will respond to the to ETTL, move the the, the thing, the in, internal bits a bit uh, around. And if you attach it to there, you can see the light pattern here is going to be square, pretty much like the shape of the screen now. But if you're shooting, say, full, like let's just say you're shooting somebody coming down a runway at a modeling show, uh, this now being attached on this side of it. gives you a more full up and down body type shot. Nice light pattern. One of these or two of these, you're going to be able to illuminate a human body completely. So this is the, and it, uh, this is the big brother to the other two flashes. I've uh, bought these to use with in Comic-Con photography. Once again, the battery that it comes with it, I believe it's rated at about 400 flashes. That, uh, I would always, always recommend whatever, all of my flashes, I have multiple batteries for. Not because I don't trust the batteries, but batteries are batteries. They fail, you forget to charge them, you have a problem. You don't want to be messing around trying to get, especially with a rechargeable, trying to figure out what went wrong. Just pop it out and put a new one in. My general rule of thumb is to carry three batteries for every flash. I carry three times the flashes that I'm going to need uh, for any kind of an assignment or any kind of work and these are these recycle just as fast you know I've talked about that a lot and I haven't shown I haven't really shown it let's see if we can do this I don't know how this is going to act on a camera 
So it's sort of earn while you learn time here. To turn the flash on, it's got an on and off switch on the side. And as soon as you turn it on, it immediately will light up there. You see, I've got mine set to a manual uh, mode and it's one, it's a, <clears throat> I don't know if that, yeah, it's showing you backwards. That is actually 256 on the, in the A group, channel one, uh, for, for uh, one 256 to the power. In manual mode, you can change it to multi-flash. If you change it to TTL, it works totally automatic. It, this, the exposure meter is going to tell this flash what to do. You don't have to worry about it. Uh, you can also set and adjust. Notice there's some little numbers there on the side. You can, uh, you can change the uh, plus minus. You can adapt a little more light, a little less light that way. You can also change uh, the grouping, the buttons. It's all very simple uh, on the back on how to do it. But we're going to try and flash this to just show you. This is one flash. This is another flash. Okay, let's try and push them as quick as we can. Now, I don't know how that's going to look on the screen. I guess I'll find out when I do this. But you can see there's virtually no space between the time. Now that's at 1, 2, 56. That's at a very small number. I to put it that low, first of all, so it wouldn't black out the screen. But uh, at that range, uh, on a manual flash, it's going to come back so fast, you're not going to be able to fire that fast. These are also capable of high-speed sync. I don't use a lot of high-speed sync. I find it's very rough on flashes, and uh, it's just not the kind of photography that I do. But if you do use it, and you want to, these flashes are quite capable of it, and with 200 watt seconds, you got a lot of power there that you could you, to spare. Uh, <clears throat> when you have this thing up at full power, one-to-one, -one, uh, it's probably going to take uh, between a, they they once again say 1.5 seconds. I, I've my experience is it's a little bit faster than that. I've never had to wait for the flash to come back when using it. Uh, a good unit, and it's the third in the C in this the series of flashes that I own. Godox makes a lot of other things uh, in this line, and pretty much a flash to match match anything you want to do. Uh, I would recommend that you you know research carefully. Also remember. With Godox flashes, one of the big advantages that these have that others haven't is no matter who the flash is purchased for, if you've bought a Canon flash, a Nikon flash, and a Sony flash, if the controller is what has to match the camera, this you'll notice I have mine marked because I have several of them. I don't want to make a mistake. That has a big S on it. That's my marking there. So when I reach in the bag and hook it onto the Sony, if I have a this doesn't have is not dedicated to any camera because it doesn't have a hot shoe. It's dependent on this data on this machine to do it. But with the other two, you're going to take uh, the this is going to tell it what they'll do, and it doesn't matter if they're Nikon's or Sony's. I like I have a Sony system. I'm using it a lot, but I really don't like the shoe on Sony. It is a weak, very weak uh, hot shoe. It's made out of plastic, and things get jostled around and things get hit. Nikon has a, I'm sorry, Canon has a nice, good, solid metal one. So I tend to have a couple of Nikon flashes in there because I know I'm never going to fit them on a camera. They're strictly going to be off camera, just like this one is. Uh, if you, uh, one other thing I want to talk about, this is a 200 watt seconds. This is not a super strong flash for studio photography, but you can use it. And this is a Bowens mount. Now this is not very much. I think this was about $25 and it's made by same company that makes them all, Godox. And you simply and you simply put your flash, feel it up, have to get it way open to get it in there. You can put your AD200 into this thing. <clears throat> the round head won't go through, you have to put that on after. And then you can mount it on a light stand, and this will accommodate a Bowens softbox, a Bowens octabox, any light shaper, a strip box, any of the light shapers that you have. Bowens is a common mount, and uh, just make sure you buy it. It'll fit, fit right onto this ring, and you can mount this on it with a softbox. A 200 is pretty good. I mean, you can certainly, it's, I'm, I'm not trying to make these things sound like they're weak by any stretch of the imagination. It's just whatever kind of photography you do. Uh, overpowering the sun, I'll turn this thing off because I don't want to waste my battery power. Uh, overpowering the sun, these, none of these flashes are going to do that. This might come close if you had a couple of them. 
But uh, for that, you're going to need it to get up into four and six, and even then, it's going to be a little bit tough. Okay, these are the three flashes that I have, three Godox flashes. Uh, I haven't talked about flash function. This is These presentations have been about just the gear, how much it costs, what you can expect it to do, uh, and I assume that you're going to learn how to do that. If you want more instruction, say, for instance, on what the settings are, how to set the lights, how to set the speeds and all that, that's certainly something we could explore in the future. Once again, if you have any questions, please don't hesitate to send me either an email, which will be at the end of this film, try to answer it for you if I can, or try to get you the answer if I can't. Uh, so hope you enjoyed this series of three different videos on three different Godox flashes. Look forward to talking to you again in the near future. Thank you very much.